Hey, what's going on everybody? Welcome back to the channel. Today we're finally getting to some of the good stuff and we're talking about the stroke. I know it's taken us some time to go ahead and get to this, but I really thought that the way we stand, frame, posture, everything was really integral for you guys to know before we got into how to actually play. But today we're gonna get into the meat of uh, really technique and how I approach with my technique and really break down that that first stroke, which is the, the full stroke of the legato stroke. So um, today I'm gonna talk about both the right and the left time we're gonna go really really slow and if we have enough time in this video I'll go ahead and play a few strokes for you to, so we can kind of get into how we approach that full stroke but I'm gonna go break it down real nice I'm gonna break it down to like its bare essence the full stroke and how to properly break the wrist on each hand and all that good stuff so stay tuned for that so before we get started I want to go ahead and, and invite you guys if you haven't started the series from the beginning or if you're looking for how to hold the stick or even the posture aspect of it go ahead and go take a look at the previous two uh, videos that are on here. The first one talks about how to hold the stick in traditional grip, and the second one kind of talks about the posture and frame and how you should be sitting uh, or standing when you play. This is just breaking down the technique from the wrist standpoint and how to execute that stroke, okay? And maybe getting into a few other strokes uh, in this video. So I encourage you to go back if you're not sure. <laughs> Okay, so the first thing that I want to talk about right here, right now, is the right hand stroke and how to break it down from the bottom up. Okay, so a lot of people have certain issues whenever they play with the right hand. The most common issues that I see are, um, you know, where the wrist is 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 kind of uh, at when it comes to this. We talked about this briefly in the last video, and we get sometimes slicing. Okay, and that what that means is that the stick comes from the right or the left side, so you don't get a nice up and down stroke. So we're gonna kind of address that and how to properly play this uh, right hand stroke. Okay, so we talked about the frame a little bit in the last video. Okay, we talked about uh, where this should be. So if you're not sure, go ahead and go check out that video first but here okay we'll, we'll kind of pick up where we left off so here we remember we talked about we don't want a break in the wrist right this way or that way that's going to, to contribute to slicing we'll talk about the components of the stroke here so for contraband usually it's all right here nice and low in the wrist and the the grip is even different but for marching band we need to get a lot more tone from the drum a lot more sound out of the drum so we have to kind of change the way that we play when we're on the field just a little bit to get more beef out of the drum so we do that by adding a little bit of arm and I'll kind of talk about that right now uh, as we go in but the arm aspect of the drumming is going to give us the weight it's going to give us uh, the projection that we need from the drum okay so like I was saying okay the frame right here uh, we've already checked that out so let's talk about the stroke now uh, when you play the stroke or when you're doing the stroke okay you want to make sure that when you're playing okay the the path of the stick is very important like I was saying you don't want it to slice so if it comes this way you get this from the side coming and that's not what you want and then if you come from this side you get a slice from that direction okay so what we really want is for this stick to go up and down okay not from the side any which side and we accomplish that by making sure that when we pick up the stick when we break this wrist remember when we're playing any kind of stroke the wrist is the primary weapon for your playing okay it's not the arm i just talked about adding a little bit of arm but that's all it is it's a little bit of arm it's not a lot of arm okay so um the primary weapon when you're playing is the wrist okay so when we break that wrist uh, it's very important that we don't break it this way or this way. And I don't know if we kind of talked about this, but I typically like to use in between a German grip and a French grip. Okay, so French grip and percussion is when the thumb is facing up, and German grip is when the back of the hand is facing up. Um, so it's not an official thing, but it's kind of in between French and German. It's kind of known as the American grip, kind of, sort of. What I mean by that is that it's not fully French and it's not fully German and flat. It's somewhere in the middle. That's kind of where I like to have uh, my stroke. It is a little bit more German than anything, but when it turns out, okay, you can see that it goes a little bit more to the French side, okay? So yeah, the path of the stick. So the best way that I know to make sure that you're not slicing the stick is when you break the wrist is to make sure to break the bead of the stick goes towards your elbow. You kind of want to th think of that um, bead going towards your elbow when you play it. That's going to give you this one line motion so that you don't get that slicing from this way and slicing from this way. And then when, if, you, if you notice when you bend, okay, this knuckle, okay, 
is going to bend this way. Like it's kind of like a like a rotate. It's similar to a rotation outward. It's not going to be like a motorcycle. You kind of want to approach it like a motorcycle, but not full motorcycle. You kind of want to uh, come with this knuckle back. Okay, and that's where it's going to be. But the main thing that you kind of want to remember, the easiest way to think about it is for this bead to go to the elbow. You see that? That gives you a nice straight stroke. Okay, so it comes one all the way down. You want to keep this unity all the way through the stroke. You want to pull it up. It's all one unit. So that gives you that straight kind of uh, non-slicing motion. So that's part one. Okay, when you bring this wrist back, you want to bring that back to the elbow. You see that? Right here. Right here. That's where you want it to come back. Okay, so typically when you're playing the right hand, you want to just use the wrist because that's how we're used to playing and concert band and all that uh, all that stuff but no no in in marching you have to add a little bit of arm at least all my drum lines do it a lot of the drum lines i've seen at arm even dci groups at the arm you don't want to just attack with the wrist because then that gives you a very weak sound so you want to add a little bit of arm one of my instructors used to call it uh 80 20 okay so it's 80 percent wrist and 20 percent arm so what that means is that you get 80 percent of your of your lift if you're playing at 12 inches 80 percent of that is wrist the other 20 percent is that arm okay so if you notice when i'm playing this i got the wrist that's pure wrist and then as soon as i add the arm i got a little bit of arm i know it's kind of hard to see but if you notice my arm is going uh up and down right here that's typically what you're getting right here okay when you're playing this right here so it's just you got wrist only and then you add a little bit of arm to it okay that's that 80 20 that's basically the right hand right there okay so remember when you break the wrist it comes back to the elbow okay that's where you want to hit it at okay that's what you want to aim for the bead you want to aim for the elbow when you're playing elbow see that okay um not this way or this way because it's going to give you slicing and then you, you get like a weird side drum uh stroke no you want to go up and down you don't want to feel it going in a weird you want to hear have a nice full contact with the pad okay you're gonna get a nice full tone that way so uh 80 20 80 percent wrist 20 percent arm try and get that bead to the elbow So this is a little strange, but now I want to talk about that left hand and how to approach the stroke from the left hand. Okay, so the right hand we saw that it's a, a, a wrist, okay, towards here. Okay, and now the left hand, we're going to talk about this. Um, the left hand is a little bit more strange, I guess you could say, than the right hand, just because it's not something we're used to doing. But the left hand, essentially, the stroke is nothing more. We talked about the right hand, that the wrist was the primary weapon when you're playing the stroke. Well, on the left hand, the same is true. The wrist right here is the primary weapon in the stroke, except instead of going like this for the left hand, unless you're a, a tenor player, you're going to go like this. It's straight rotation of, if you look at it from the front, okay, and you're here, this is set position, it's all rotation of the wrist. Okay, that is your primary uh, weapon right here in the left hand. And it's just like if you're turning the doorknob or you're turning a doorknob, a doorknob to your house, a doorknob to anywhere. Okay, that's just exactly what you're doing. You just rotate that wrist over. Okay, you see that? Okay. Um, and I don't know if we talked about this, but it, I think it's worth mentioning that the palm of your hand should be facing most of it if not all of it should be facing to the right okay you should just see this bottom half of your palm when you're playing so anyway okay so like i was telling you the primary weapon is the wrist okay so this is the stroke right here uh there's really no trick to making sure that you're not getting uh a slice from this hand except to just kind of eyeball this okay so if if you're following this one plane here okay you want to make sure that that arc stays on that plane so if you look right here Okay, I'm gonna try my best to kind of show you this. This arc should be, uh, I'm not doing a very good job there, but it should be uh, one line, okay? So one line this way when you're playing, you wanna make sure that this would go towards, you know, the butt of the stick. And that's kind of how you know that you're getting a nice uh, stroke out of this left hand, okay? So you don't want it to come this way away or that way away from the butt of the stick. You want the bead 
to go towards the butt of the stick and that's kind of how you can see so the rotation comes it goes towards the butt and now like I was saying with the right hand you want to add a little bit of arm to it same goes for the left hand okay right now if I were to just do nothing but wrist you get kind of a weak sound to it but I'm still using the wrist okay I'm still using it I'm still using it but if I add a little bit of arm to it you see that up and down motion right here you get this movement when you're playing that left hand that's kind of what you want okay so you got uh, rotation and uh, arm so that's what you're getting a colleague of mine once kind of compared it to kind of like flicking off like something nasty off of your hands that's kind of what you want to do here okay so that's the idea like gross 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 right okay so that's kind of how you want to do it so like I was telling you from here it's wrist and arm so you get this 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 when you play this is for the full stroke okay obviously technique changes if you're playing diddles or paradiddles or anything like that but for the full stroke this is what you get it's rotation of the wrist and then up and down okay that's what you get And uh, I think that'll be it for this video just because in the next video we're going to continue talking about the full stroke and I'm going to give you guys some exercises and precision. It's also going to help you kind of uh, lock in this motion. For now, practice that motion okay, that we talked about in the right hand and the left hand. Just to recap, when you're playing the right hand, okay, the bead goes to your elbow. Okay, Don't forget that. Here it goes to your elbow. I know it's kind of hard to see that, but right here, okay, you can kind of see that there. It goes to the elbow, okay, that's the, that's the right hand. The left hand, you get that nice rotation and an arm movement, okay, up and down arm movement. Okay, so practice those uh, movements, and then for the next video, I'll go ahead and give you guys some exercises to go ahead and really train yourself to get this full stroke going, okay? And then if we have time, we'll go ahead and talk about the downstroke, uh, the tap, and the upstroke which are all pretty much your fundamental strokes when it comes to rudimental drumming and all that stuff so once again thanks for dropping by if you want to see the whole series from the beginning or if you need to refresh yourself don't be afraid to go ahead and go back and take a look at those take a look at the grip uh, take a look at the frame and then of course in this video the actual mechanics of the stroke Again, as always, if you have any questions, don't be afraid to drop them down below and I'll be able to answer them as best I can. Uh, I recently got a comment on the first video asking how to possibly get that left hand traditional up to speed with the right hand. Um, he was telling me that at his school he's strictly match grip even for a snare and he wanted to do DCI but he wasn't a trad player. He wanted to know how he could get that left hand up to speed with the right hand. My best advice for that and I, I went ahead and replied to the comment but I'm going to go ahead and talk about it in this video just like I promised I would. My best advice for that left hand uh, to getting it up to the right hand is to use it. Use it as much as you can. Just because uh, you need to remember that you're working with muscles just like everything else. You have to train the muscles, you have to make them stronger so that they do what you want them to do. So a good example of that or a good way to kind of think about it is if you're going to the gym and you're lifting weights and you start off with little baby 10 pounders to go ahead and start curling, uh, you're not gonna go in there and do 50 pounds. Like I was telling you, you're gonna do 10 pounds and then when you get strong enough, you're gonna jump up to 20 pounds. When you get stronger, you jump up to 30 pounds, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera, until you're uh, curling you know, 50 pounds or whatever it is on each bicep it's the same thing with your drumming uh, me myself if I don't play for a long time my muscles do not listen to me I have several ex several years of experience drumming and even then I have to spend several weeks of conditioning just to get what we call chops uh, to get my chops back up to where they're serviceable so uh, my biggest you know advice is to use it use that left hand and play with it a lot if you if you're strictly matched at your school go ahead and play your exercises with your left hand traditional um sit in front of the tv while you're watching tv and uh just use that left hand you know if i were if i were you and i were trying to build that left hand here i would just sit down and just play eights all day long just with that left hand trying to get that stroke um where it needs to be and just st sit there and, and do it Okay, get that left hand strong, and then once you kind of get that, uh, go to double beat. And just play it 
forever in a day, okay? You just sit there playing. It should start to burn. When it starts to burn, you know you're building muscle because that's the way the body works. When it's burning, that means you are building muscle. So that's my biggest uh, advice for now. Just, to, just a quick advice is to really make that left hand work. I'll talk a little bit more in depth probably in a later video about conditioning and what you can do to condition, but if you kind of have exercises, go ahead and do that. Use these three videos to kind of look at um, what the stroke is, is like and then and then start there. Start with some legato strokes with some uh, double beat strokes. Um, other than that, if you have any questions, don't forget as always to drop them down below and I'll do my best to answer all of them. If it's a popular uh, issue, like I think this will be a popular issue, that's when I'll put it into the video. Other than that, I'll go ahead and answer in the comments, um, but I thought that was relevant. So thanks so much for your comments and um, we'll see you guys next time, hopefully with some strokes and some exercises for you. So uh, we'll see you.